3D Via Composer has long had the ability to save files as interactive SVG files. These are vector graphic technical illustration documents that can be viewed on a web page. When you save an SVG file and view it in Internet Explorer, the formatting isn't really what I would consider up to par. However, 3D Via Composer has a preview functionality that I'm going to show you today how to utilize to save off these same SVG files in a very well formatted layout, like the one we see on the left. It's a very simple process. Once we've set up our bill of materials views inside of 3D via Composer, I want to first create a little bit of navigation. So here we have a standard view. The other views here I name uh, more specifically what they're really meant to depict. In this case it's the main assembly view. And then we've drilled down and hidden some of the other components to show the different subsets within this assembly. I try to name these views in a very predictive manner here. And the last view I created was view 6. So a simple slow double click on this one. We're just going to give it a little bit better name of press. Now what you want to do is up front here create a little bit of a navigation. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we know what the hyperlinks are, um, how we want to navigate both out or drilling down into the files and then navigating back. Now in the end these files are viewable among a web browser so there's going to be simple forward and back buttons that people are, are already used to using. Uh, but we can create a very prescribed interaction if we'd like with the user. So the first thing I want to do is plan this out. And based on my view names, we have our over render, pivot, conveyor, and press section, and then the main section of this assembly. So what I'd like to do is have a little text file where I have the, the links that I want so that there's no typing errors. So in that text file, what I need to do first is add that last section here, which was my press. So these links don't go anywhere right now and currently they're going to be relative to each other so if these files remain in the same folder we really don't have to worry about whether that folder is located in a particular spot on your computer. So here's how we go ahead and create the navigation. Um, first going to intend to go ahead and do the over under section here so let me just copy that text so I have it. And we're going to start by going to the main view of our assembly. Now in this view we have a couple of sections of our over under. So to select those I'm simply going to use the assembly tab and we'll control select both sections of the over render. Essentially what this is going to do is create this link uh, as a property of each of the parts within both of these assemblies. Now as I go down to my properties tab, here near the bottom we have an area called link. And it's under the event section. And all I'm going to do is just put that very piece of text, overender.html, in this section. And what that's going to actually do is if I select off of the parts and then select an individual component, you'll actually see that that individual component has a link to overender.html. Let's just go ahead and do the rest with the remaining parts of this assembly. So here we're going to go ahead back to our text file and let's grab pivot. Again, this is just to make sure that we don't have any typing errors. And then we'll simply grab our pivot conveyor frame, which grabs all the components, and we'll add that as our link. Okay, next one's going to be the press. Press is right up here. Let's just make sure again we've got the right text and we'll paste press into that link. And last, we have to go ahead and deal with the uh, conveyor sections. So let's grab that one, conveyor, and then here we have conveyor 1 and conveyor 1, a pair of those. Great. So now we've pasted all those in. Once we've done this, we've got to make sure that we've updated this view. So let's just right click on the view, say update, and then that will ensure that we've locked in all of that functionality. Pick a single component, we see that that one's going to go to the conveyor section. Okay. From here, we can go ahead and create navigation back from the other views, and we can do that in a fairly rapid succession. What I'm going to do is just go into one of the views here and add a piece of text. So over into the pivot view, uh, we will just simply author, and I'm going to create a simple piece of 2D text. Nothing difficult to this. We'll just call that back to main assembly. You can modify some of the properties down here to make that piece of text a little larger. And then we're going to go down here and click also on this one, a link. And just to make sure that we're all set, yep, we just called that main. Great. Okay, so now we have this particular piece of text, which now has the same type of hyperlink. And that just saves us the trouble of having to create any navigation back from any of the components. We'll right-click on that view and simply update that. Now we can put the same piece of text on all the other views very quickly. And by doing this, we simply select that piece of text and then we'll control select all three views that we'd like to apply that to over here in the left area. At the top we have a button here that simply says update views with selected actors or you can right click on any one of the selected views and choose the same option. 
and you'll actually see that same piece of text appear in the exact same position in all three of those views. So just to make sure that everything looks nice, let's go over to the last view here, which is our pivot view. Um, that piece of text will lift just fine up there. Let's go over to our conveyor section, and I really just want to move that piece of text over, and we can do that just with a simple pick and drag. Make sure to update your view. And now with our over-render, looks like the bill of materials is going to conflict with where this piece is, so uh, let's just go ahead and grab that guy and move him out of the way. Good enough. Okay, right there. Looks great. Okay, now it's the process to save all these views. And we're going to start off just by um, saving off our main view. So let's go back to the main view, which has all that other functionality built into it. Here within Composer we have some interactivity, and this is what we're going to capture in the SVG file. Um, but we're going to format this nicely using the preview functions of 3D via Composer. Now we set up our technical illustration. You can access this through the workshops. Click Technical Illustration, and then set your profiles in the way you'd like things to show. Now I'm going to use the HLR high, but I'm going to add shadows to this. And instead of doing just a static save as, which will save this out as an SVG file or a vector graphics file, we're going to do a preview. Now the preview functionality actually gives us a very nice formatted image, and we're going to utilize that to the best of our abilities here. We do this in a fairly repetitive but very simple process. We're going to wait for our preview to pop up. When it does, it's going to go ahead and pop up in Internet Explorer. And then from there, we're going to utilize the path that it gives us in Internet Explorer to go and capture where these temporary images happen to be. Depending on the complexity of the image and the quality settings we have set up in our technical illustration workshop, this could take anywhere from a couple of seconds to around a minute or so. And the resulting image looks like this. If you hover over your bills of material balloons, you'll see the components and the BOM highlight. If you hover over any components in the graphics area, you'll see the corresponding sections to the bill highlight, and then conversely to all those, we'll see the highlighting of the bill materials will then highlight the geometry on screen. Now this is just a temporary image. The save as only saves the SVG portion. So we're actually going to utilize the information that we see up here in our address bar. Here is where the actual HTML page that we're looking at is stored. So we're going to take everything except the HTML page, and we're just going to simply copy that path. Now we're going to go to a basic Windows Explorer browsing window and let's paste everything but the final image. And there is the SVG file and the SVG temp that we have. So I'm going to copy the SVG and the HTML file. We'll hit Control C and then I'll take those files over to my working location and I'm just going to save those in a new folder called SVG HTML. Okay, now let's take a look at what these files look like. First of all, I want this web page to actually be the name of the views that we have in our composer document. So I'm just going to call this one main. And let's also go ahead and update the SVG file to also be main. Now we're going to make sure our links are going to call this page properly, but what we have to deal with is now this HTML document is no longer looking at the proper SVG file. If we double click this, it won't open. So we need to right click and edit the HTML document. And we're going to do that by opening it up with Notepad. When we open this with Notepad, it's actually pretty man readable. HTML code is not very difficult. But what we're looking through for is the link to the image, which is right here, value equals temp SVG. And all we need to do is just sync these up. We'll call that main.svg. Now when I close this text document, I'm going to save it. And if we double click main.html, it'll actually open up the file that we just saved over in our Internet Explorer window. Okay, links directly to the right SVG file because we've changed it. Now what you'll also see here is as I hover over the bill of materials, in the lower left hand corner down here you can see that we have our hyperlinks already preset, whether I hover over the geometry, the balloons, or the bill of materials. That's going to play out a little bit later. Okay, so let's just do that very repetitive process over again. We're going to go now to the overender. And with our overender view, we will preview. And now you might notice that it's the exact same preview path. So temp SVG HTML, everything before that first backslash or the last backslash is identical. So we're going to navigate to the exact same folder. And again, we're going to go ahead and grab the temp SVG and the HTML.
copy those and paste those over into our working folder. So the one that we're working on right now is our overender. Again, we'll rename the SVG file. And for safety's sake, you might even want to consult your navigation guide if you want to use the exact same syntax and ensure that they're perfect. Here, I can just overwrite the entire thing with a copy and paste. Don't forget, we have to go into the overender, we have to edit that in Notepad, and we have to change where this is pointing. So we're just going to use our copied and pasted version to get the right syntax there. Okay, so we do that process three more times. And with that, we should have a very easy set of navigable files that we can use a web browser to send our customers to. Let's go ahead and close everything we have there. And I'm going to double click my main.html. Comes up automatically. We now have a very direct path. It's only going to deal with what's in the direct folder relative to it. So again, we see our highlights. And if I want to click on any one of these, I can click the body. and It will take me directly into that portion of it where I get further highlighting. You can use the basic back button if a user prefers. Or we can go ahead and click forward, highlight once again, and use the navigation button that we created, which will go back to the main assembly. There we go. And that is the process of using the 3D Via Composer Preview inside of our technical illustration workshop to create very nicely formatted HTML viewable SVG files.